Hello, I've finished putting my art travel kit together now and I just thought I'd show it to you. This is all the stuff I like to be able to take with me. The two sketch pads that I've got don't fit into the bag unless I had not too much in the bag. So I've decided that um, I'll be carrying those separately. I'm never going to be going anywhere without a rucksack that's got water and other daily stuff in it. So it's not too big a worry for me to to be carrying that uh, so i'll show you what's inside the bag now the, the bag itself i got on amazon recently um, it's really inexpensive i think it was about 11 pounds or something like that it did come with um extra leaves in it but i've, I've i think it had one extra one actually i've taken that out so firstly, in this zip pocket, there are just things that were too big to go in, in these loops. So I've got um, a little ruler, a white Posca fine pen, and a small water brush. I think this is a Pentel one. So I've not kept much in there because it needs to stay relatively flat. And in these pockets I've just got folded up um, a kitchen roll, which I'm happy to refill um, each morning. I'll draw out each of the things just so you can see the variety of uh, lines and things that I can get. So I've got my trusty Pentel P205 and that's in 0.5 mil. Uh, I filled it up with quite a lot of uh, refills, so that should be okay. And this is just HB lead in here. Then for a softer pen pencil, I've got a black wing. And I'll use this one if I want to do any pencil sketching. I think this is like the equivalent of a 4B, so it's fairly soft. And it's got the, the rubber in the end. So it really is a lovely pencil that I can get quite a good bit of variation in. Whereas the Pentel, I like just for either making notes or doing rough outlines for sketches. I've decided not to take a fine liner, but I've opted for this Uniball Air Micro Pen. And it's got kind of like this chunky nib with like a rollerball end in it. I've been using these for a while just well just as my everyday pen and I really quite like it uh, it's waterproof when it dries which was my main thing that I wanted for a pen that I took so I can use this for either sketching underneath watercolor washers that kind of thing or just my day-to-day -day, uh, pen for notes and everything else Then I've got four paint brushes with me. Uh, the first is the one that I anticipate using most, which is the number six silver black velvet Voyage Round. And I've been playing with it quite a bit over the last few days since I got it. And I think I can do most things with this. So I can get quite broad strokes with it. I can also get quite fine detail and it holds quite a bit of water it's quite soft I also like um, the weight 
I like the weight of it. It's not too, um, it doesn't feel too much different from holding an, an ordinary paintbrush. This back part's quite light. So the next paintbrush that I'm taking is um, the Skoda Perla number eight. This one doesn't hold so much water, but it's, I absolutely love the tip on it. Sorry, excuse the state of my fingers. They're all painty. It's just got a really nice amount of snap and uh, got really controllable um, detail. And the other travel brush I'm taking is a Skoda Ultimo number 10. And this is quite a soft brush, which holds a lot of water. So this is my um, bigger, oops bigger wash brush and it's not a particularly not a particularly fine one the thing that I've been finding with this brush uh, this is a new one as well I got I've got a few of these things in my recent um, art haul which I show in the art haul video I find that the um, the weight of this uh, metal barrel tends to pull the paintbrush back a bit so I think I'm gonna have to I think it's best as a kind of you know it's a it's good that it is a wash brush because I'm not having to do as precise work with it because that's the best place to hold it when you hold it there it's too bottom heavy and then I decided to take one brush that's not a travel brush and that's the Proline Pro Art number one and I've just got one of these sleeves on it. I like this one just because it's so controllable and it's got a lot of snap in it. And great for any tiny details. So that's the first few things. Next I'll show you the colour pencils that I'm including. That's Horizon Blue by Holbein. I've, inc I've included quite a few different blues actually, uh, just because as I've been looking at um, photographs of Nepal where I'm going. I'm planning on painting mainly outdoor scenery and there's a lot of variation in the sky colours. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like these blue options. Um, this is Halo Cyanine Blue Luminance. So then the middle leaves are pretty much mainly Luminance by Karen Dash. So that's an ultramarine. And Prussian blue. And then I've got one light fast pencil, which is a spruce green. Dark phthalo cyanine green. I don't know if these two look similar in the video, but this is a, um, a much more yellowy, olivey, dark green. That's leaf green, dermat tink tense. A 
that's moss green I got recently. This is olive yellow. I mean green ochre. olive brown black Payne's grey Paints go thirty per cent. And that's raw umber ten. Sorry, that cut out at the end. So the last few I had were um raw umber ten per cent, sepia fifty per cent, sepia, and I forgot to include whole wine soft white. So the next ones. Burnt Sienna, Natural Russet, Terracotta. Burnt ochre ten per cent. Raw sienna. Medium cadmium cadmium yellow. Anthroquinoid pink, permanent red, and purplish red. So, as you can see, I've got a lot of um, landscape colours here, and only a few um, quite bright colours. As I've been doing my practice sketches over the last few days, um, these are mainly the colours that I've been using. So that's that's what I've relied on quite heavily. I've got a paint set in this kit as well, so I'm happy that any colours I'm missing here I can mix up with my paint set if necessary. So in the back of the last flap, I've got a few Tombos and I'll show you those as well. For the Tombos, I've got all landscapey colours again um, from the sketches that I did. I found that these were the ones which I was using the most. And I wanted a few Tombos just so I can cover large areas quite quickly. Um, which I could do with watercolour. But with the Tombow they're going to dry quickly. And um, I just like having that option. So I'll just write down which ones those are. Okay, so that's the Tombos there. I 
I found that oh, move this up. I found that since I um, have put this these swatches on the front of my Tombow case, I showed a video of me doing this a couple of weeks ago. I'm using my Tombow so much more, and I'm enjoying them so much more because it's just easy to get to them and use them. Okay, so in the back of my case, I've got some washi tape. Um, I've just put that in for making ni nice edges on the sketches. I think that looks quite nice like that. I've got my Coom double sharpener. And I don't have a contained one. So at the moment I've just popped it in this little glass jar. A mini Bon Maman jam jar. I've got a small Pritt stick. In okay, case so I want to stick any mementos in my albums as well. I've got this little water carrier. I've had this, I've only had this about two days now and I filled it up and I've kind of just been throwing it in and moving it around and I found that it's, it's been fine, it hasn't leaked at all. Sorry, that's just water from when I opened it now. Um, so yeah, I think that will do there for now. Next, I'll show you the Neo Color 2s that I'm including in my kit. I've got a big tin of 30, plus I've got an extra tin with additional individual colors that I've bought. But I, I love how slim these tins are, and so I bought one that fits just 15 in, and, and then I've, I've picked different colours from my set of 30 and my other open stock ones um, to put in here. So to choose them, I tried not to pick colours that were completely the same. So these are the colours that I've got. Olive. Chromium oxide green, dark green, oops, Sahara yellow, beige, brown, silver grey, grey. Black, indigo blue, light blue, light cobalt, turquoise green, lilac, and crimson alizarin hue. So yeah, they put, they put in the back here. Oh, I've also got um, a Tombow Mono um, eraser that I like. And then finally, I've got a paint kit. Now, <laughs> I've been making a big fuss about what paints to take. And I spent, I did a whole video and I spent ages putting together an Altoid paint palette. But as I've been using it, since I put it together, uh, so I went out one day this week to, to do some painting. And I realised that it's just... The mixing situation was problematic for me. I got a sheet of um, like paper palette and somebody suggested that I cut that up and um, I could keep it in, keep, keep lots of sheets in a tin or I, I also thought I could maybe just, you know, um, fold it up and keep it in the bag and open it up when I need it. They all felt a bit faffy, so then I was like, oh, well, I've got this little palette that I used to use for um, alcohol inks. So I cleaned that up 
And then I was like, well, hang on a minute, that's ridiculous because <laughs> if I'm taking that and that, the size of that is bigger than just taking a normal palette. So as much as I loved putting my old toy to palette together, I think for this trip, I'm, I'm going to take this one. Um, though afterwards, I probably will put this back together again because I kind of love it. And I've just enjoyed using it on my desktop as well. So this is a tin that I got, an A Gallo set in, but it's just a standard, it's just a standard palette. So today I transferred the paints that I put together in my Altoid tin in. And then I realised I'd got space down the middle to put some more um, pans in. So I, <laughs> I haven't got any spare empty pans. So I looked through a couple of my other palettes. So I've got this one, which I think I did a video on right at the beginning. Oh, my dog hair is going everywhere. So this is mainly Winsor & Newton, there's a few Jacksons in there, and then it's the Holbein Pastel watercolour set. So I've picked a couple out of here to put in my little travel palette. And then the other set I've got, which has got half pans in it, is my A Gallo set. So I've taken a few of these out of here. It's a bit daft really. I spent ages and ages selecting my original 14 paints to go in it and then I spent about 30 seconds picking the middle ones out and so these were just more of a, a gut reaction because I already know I've got um, a really good mixing palette or that I'm happy with anyway for my initial 14 and so for these additional six I just chose colours that will make life easier or, or make it a bit more interesting. So I'm just going to, I've just drawn out a little card, which I'll cover in sticky back plastic and that'll be my colour card that comes with me. So first off I had titanium white, which is looking ever so slightly blue there, must not have washed my brush very well. So my Sennelier Lemon Yellow. So this is the original card that I made for my Altoid palette. That's Daniel Smith's Crinacridone Deep Gold. Smith Pyro Scarlet. Daniel Smith's Cronacodome Rose. I'll link in the description below to the video where I put this original palette together and my rationale for all the colours that I included. That's Holbein's Bright Rose.
Daniel Smith's French Ultramarine. I'll do the original ones first and then the extras. That's Daniel Smith's Verdita. And that is, um, I think it's an Elie's Thalo turquoise. That's an Elie's turquoise green. Daniel Smith's Undersea Queen. Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet. So I'm just leaning on a sheet of A4 paper here. That's what I'm painting on. That's Daniel Smith's environmentally friendly brown iron oxide. And that's Daniel Smith's Payne's Grey. So the few that I've hastily picked for the middle, again, I'll try these out for um, a week or two and see if I want to make any, switch out any. But also I've ordered some um, just cheap empty half pans from Amazon so that I have actually got some spare if there's any of my tube paints I'd rather take. So this is A Gallo's Buff Titanium. Schminky's Naples yellowish red. Oh, that's I'm not sure where this green's coming from, this darker green. And this is Holbein's Leaf Green. If I didn't know what this paint was, I could tell it was an A Gallo paint because of the lovely rosemary smell. And then I've got another A Gallo paint, which is Naturno.
which always throws me in the palette because when it's dry it just looks like um, cap at mortem and then suddenly it's this beautiful purple colour and then the last one I've got is another A Gallo and this is chromite brown oops and this huge box at the end and I really like this one it's it's got lovely granulation um, it's a lot more of a a blue brown than the iron oxide that I've got here so yeah super happy with that um, selection now so I think I forgot to mention that this this dark green here is dark forest from a gallo while I was writing these down I started off using um, the the Posca the PC 1M that's all fiber tip and I realised that it's actually turns out wider and not so easy to control. As this um, PC1MR, so I'm switching this out and this is the one I'm going to take in my art kit. And I'm just going to cover my colour guide in clear sticky back plastic. There we go. I've still got another couple of weeks before I go away, so the chances are I'll probably change my mind again uh, on this middle row. But I enjoy making these, and it's not the end of the world if I have to do another one. The other thing that might slightly complicate things is that I also um, saw a portable painter on eBay this week and I managed to buy it for a really good price so when the portable painter comes I might prefer that way of having water holders though I, I know I can only fit 12 paints in so I probably won't be tempted over to that but it's going to be good fun playing with the portable painter I'll show you that when it comes and what color to, what colors I choose to put in it Okay, I'm just going to swatch these out alongside my other colours now. So here's the full range of colours in my travel art bag. It's not exactly a limited palette. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really, really happy with everything I've got in there. And then this once again, that these are the other materials that I've got. So now I actually just need to use it and go and get practicing. Hopefully over the next week or two I'll be able to go out and do some plein air painting and see how I get on. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.